this morning, uh, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you happen to be joining us from in the world. Um, this is our first session of the Pathways to Industry 2020-23. It's going to be a great session because we have an amazing speaker on a creating a compiling profile on your in 2023 using LinkedIn. Christopher Sanderson is a member of the IEEE and a Cap New Board of Governors. He also is an organizational leadership effectiveness expert and coach and a keynote speaker. He is a U.S. Army veteran with multiple honors on tours of duty and has numerous corporate and nonprofit recognitions. He is also the IEEE Region 5 South Area Chair and the Houston Section Chair. And uh, like I said, he's the Region 5 6 Governor for IEEE at a Capanew and a good friend of mine. Really happy to have you here with us, Christopher. Thank you. I'm going to turn it right over to you. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, those words are very, uh, made me blush a little bit. How's everyone uh, doing uh, this morning? I hope everyone is uh, doing well because uh, at the end of this presentation, I want to try. Uh, I want to try to help save your life. So, with that being said, um, again, this session is uh, creating a compelling uh, profile in 2023. So, what does that really mean? It can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. For one, it's opportunity for us to really align our brand our reputation with our LinkedIn profile, which is very, very important. So let's just take a few minutes to talk about the pathway to industry vision. It's here, we're here to prepare students to enter the workforce and advises young professionals on how to advance their career. So what does that mean, advance our career? Well, again, when building up your profile or even actually trying to look for that job, you really have to build up that LinkedIn profile and that's what we're here to discuss. So our learning objective uh, for this uh, session, we wanna develop, grow and build. We wanna help you uh, develop uh, your LinkedIn profile with skills and accomplishments that really represent you where you can stand out and what uh, you are passionate about. We want to grow. We want to help grow your professional uh, skills every day and stay informed on the latest news and insights from industry leaders, relevant content and groups. And build. We want to help build your online brand by at least understanding industry news and how your opinion on those, on those leadership uh, things will help with your audience. So I want to pick a couple of things uh, in mind on this learning objective. First one is definitely on the development side. When we're talking about development, we're talking about your skills and accomplishments. So my question is, you know, what type of endorsements are you getting uh, from uh, other, uh, other members on LinkedIn? Are you sharing those accomplishments? Are you sharing those skills? Are you sharing your passion on where you want to be from a job standpoint? And number two, we're talking about growing. We want to try to really help you understand about growing those skills. Now, you're going, you're going to school for, let's say, electrical engineering, and there's a certain part of electrical engineering that you want to really uh, focus on. I'm in the renewable space, and so I tend to consume content and share content around the renewable uh, space specifically around battery energy storage systems. So I'm always consuming that content. I'm also sharing my, uh, my thoughts on what I'm seeing from a trend standpoint. Then I wanna build. Again, I wanna build on other industry news that I'm seeing. I wanna share my opinion. I want other people to consume some of that content and ask me my opinion on that. That is your brand of who you are. So, welcome to LinkedIn, the world's largest professional network with more than 875 million members in over two, uh, 200 uh, countries and territories worldwide. And is your profile compelling and effective enough for 2023 employment goals? So think about that. Is your profile compelling and effective enough 
for 2023 employment goals? Well, let's look at the uh, first part here. Making sure that you have a professional photo. And there's several ways we can look at this. You can go out and uh, have a uh, hire a professional to get your um, professional uh, profile uh, done. A lot of times, if you attend a lot of different uh, conferences, they tend to have free photo uh, sessions for your professional profile. In the Houston section, whenever we're doing uh, events, we make sure to hire a photographer to help our members to get that profile uh, done, having that professional brand of who they are. A lot of times people don't take advantage of that and not prepare. Whenever I have one of those uh, sessions, I tend to have, I take multiple photos multiple times. So I have a different jacket. I have three or four different uh, ties and I may have a shirt or two. It's my time and my opportunity to get those uh, professional uh, profile photos done at little to no cost. I've been seeing a lot of uh, profiles without any pictures, no photo. What do you think the likelihood of someone with no photo having someone of interest to want to connect with? Now I tend not to uh, connect to those people that don't willing to have a photo. And every once in a while I may uh, accept a connection or reach out to a person especially if they're in my industry, especially if they have uh, a compelling uh, profile in reference to whatever articles they've written or what are the things they're sharing on the LinkedIn profile. But you're 14 more times likely to be viewed if you have a photo. So please keep that in mind. So let's look at that a little bit. Let's really narrow down how our brand or our photo or our profile should be looking. We need to make sure that we have a custom uh, header. I know a lot of times, a lot of people tend not to have any type of uh, custom header. They use the default that's in LinkedIn. And I always encourage them to make sure to add something there something that really represents who you are, represents where you want to go. My uh, particular uh, profile has a nice graphic of a light bulb in multiple positions. Some of the light bulbs are out, some of them are lit. Because I want to bring the ideas to any organization, and that's how I look at my header. So think, definitely think about your particular uh, a custom header. The other thing I tend to look at is look at how many followers. Now, some of, uh, of you may not have a lot of followers. Think about connecting with people. And the easiest, one of the easiest ways to uh, do that very easily, at least for me, one of my strategies is if you are in the uh, engineering field, if you're from the state of Texas, if you went to my alma mater or one of my alma mater systems, I graduated from Prairie View A&M University and the Texas A&M system is very uh, big in the state of Texas. And the other is if, uh, if I worked with you at, at a previous company, I could always reach out and make that connection. So think about that from a follower standpoint. Again, Let's look at your profile summary. We want to make sure that you have a very nice, compelling uh, profile summary. Those are what, some of the first things that people's going to draw people's eyes to your profile. We want to make sure to uh, have a very compelling uh, summary. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on in the presentation. But the other thing, you want to have nice posts. Now, posts are uh, very simple for you to share your thoughts, uh, share news, a way for you to uh, definitely contribute uh, content uh, for uh, other people to, uh, other members to consume. So I do a lot of posting. 
I posted multiple times actually about the uh, Pathways Industry uh, event that was taking place. I also uh, shared a lot of the uh, different speakers that were speaking. But again, you really have to spend some time in developing your posts. For me, it's kind of natural at this point in time. I normally get up in the mornings and I spend at least five, 15 minutes working on LinkedIn, reading the posts that are coming through, giving the opinions about the certain posts, liking, commenting, and sharing. And whatever your routine is, find that time to be able to spend some time on your profile. And the last part at uh, the, uh, the bottom here is your summary. And the summary, we're going to go in a little bit more detail about it, but your summary is just your professional journey and your goals. What do you want to accomplish? What are you trying to uh, convey uh, to everybody who you are? Again, look at it more like your personal uh, brain. So we talked a little bit about the uh, background photo. So let's take a look at a couple. Now you can check out uh, Reed's uh, uh, background. Nice, professional. It really highlights his face. Michael has a pretty nice one as well. And Mike has a pretty nice one. The most important thing about your background is that you have to make sure that it's really highlighting who you are in reference to your facial or body um, features. And so your background is a photo that is the second visual element at the top of your profile. It's going to grab the, the person's attention. It's going to set the contest and show little, a little more about uh, who you are. More than anything, the right background photo helps you uh, with your page and helps you stand out and engage, engage the attention to stay uh, memorable. So you think about that. So sometimes when I've looked at certain profiles and we have, uh, we've uh, had the opportunity to take a look at some of them, what type of background are they trying to display? Is the background overwhelming that they're following themselves? And so you wanna make sure that you have the right type of background that fits who you are, but also does not take away from your main profile picture. All right. So listen, number three, make your headline more than just a job title. So we're going to stay right here and look at uh, Reed, Michael, and Mike. Now there's no rules saying that the description at the top of your profile page has to be just a job title. Use the headline feel to say a little bit more about who you are and how you see your role. Why do you want to do what you do? And what makes you tick? If, you got, if you're a sales rep uh, at your company, you are, you are the ball of the social selling. Then let's take a quick look at a person's uh, profile page. Headlines of inspiration. There must be almost certain to have some type of uh, good job title there. So let's look at uh, Reed here, Reed Hoffman. He's saying he's an entrepreneur, product specialist, and investor. That's pretty interesting. Well, Michael here has, uh, he has designing wellness programs that help people unleash their greatness. And Mike has a passion about investing in people. Very, very much really nice uh, headlines. Is it uh, Sylvia or uh, is it today? Yep, I just wanted to pop in before you move on to number four. There's a question asking uh, back about the photos. Do you okay. recommend I have a professional photo or a more casual, relaxed photo? 
I prefer a professional photo. And the reason why I prefer a professional photo, that's where I want to be. I want to be uh, looked upon as a serious professional and a potentially executive. So if you take a look at my profile, I wear a bow tie in the majority of all of my pictures. I also always have a jacket on with a nice shirt on. I make sure that my clothing is not overwhelming the rest of my facial features or my profile. So for me and where I am at this stage in my uh, profession, I want, to, I want to be perceived and looked upon as a potential executive with a particular company. Now, a lot of us are just now starting off down this journey. So does it make sense for you to wear a tie? Maybe not. But look at uh, Reed. Look at Michael. Look at Mike. Do you think that their profile still fits who they are? Especially Reed. And he says in his headline, he says that he's an entrepreneur, product strategist, product strategist and an uh, investor. And he looks that part. So the only thing, Sylvia, I would say is that it just depends what type of brand or representation you want people to perceive you as. Very good. Thank you, Christopher. I'll keep them coming as they pop in. Okay, not a problem. Yep. So let's look at number four. Turn your summary into a story. So you want to make sure that uh, your summary is no more than 40 words. And you need to uh, um, include keywords, but not a lot of buzz buzzwords. Focus on your career and accomplishments. So what are we saying here? Don't brag a little bit about yourself. Let people know who you are. Let them be able to understand who you are and would this be a type of person you would want to work with or even work for. I think today you have so many options. Uh, I, my daughter uses the, uh, the comment that you, what's your persona? So what do you want people to perceive you as? So LinkedIn, that summer is going to give you that opportunity to express who you are. So say that you're a um, just graduating from school and you writing up your summary. What would be one of the examples that you would use? So I'm asking that question to the audience. And Sylvia, let me know if you have anyone as willing to share. Well, another question just came in through the Q&A, Christopher, and it's, should I include any high school accomplishments or only those from university? That depends. So what type of high school accomplishments are we what type of high school accomplishments are we talking about? Are we talking about uh, you received the first place from uh, Robox at the national championship? I would add that. Would I add that I was a uh, um, on the uh, honor roll and was part of the National Honor Society in high school? I would add that. Would I necessarily add that I played football in high school? Well, that depends. If I'm an athlete, there are, there are athletes that have uh, LinkedIn profiles. I actually follow um, um, William Griffin, who used to, who's from my hometown. And so he does list some of his, uh, some of his accomplishments. But the, the most important thing you have to remember is that as you articulate, as you grow yourself, this may not be necessary for you to add those high school accomplishments. I would look at more of the things I accomplished more in college. Because again, you are entering into this professional field. Any other questions? You might get to this later, Christopher, but just in a general question, how often are you editing any of these elements 
and you know is there like sort of a strategic thought process to that yes for me it is so whenever i have a major accomplishment um that i want to uh share that i think is that i think is newsworthy that i want to share i'm updating my profile if it's a uh job promotion if it's uh, a major certification actually recently I, I posted as of yesterday that i received a uh, certification um an industry certification uh from asq so i'm updating that information sometimes i update my uh, uh profile or i should say posts if I'm attending a particular conference and I reach out to uh, my followers or my connections, they say, hey, listen, I'm going to be at the uh, Pathway for Industries event for 2023. We'd love to catch up with you and hop in. I'm going to be attending the uh, Creating a Compelling um, LinkedIn profile for 2023. Let's catch up. So yes share what you're doing and any type of accomplishments. Any other questions? I think we can keep moving through and I'll let you know as they come up. All right. Thank I'm, you. I'm surprised that no one wants to share their story. So let me give you one. From a student's uh, standpoint, I would say that uh, I am a um, graduating from uh, Prairie View Adam University with a degree in mechanical engineering, looking to expand my interest in the area of renewable energy, specifically any opportunities in the area of battery energy storage systems. So if you need someone that has a love and interest in this area, I would love to learn more about the opportunity. My specialties are, I've completed the DOE Energy Storage Systems Certification Course. I am a Six Sigma Black Belt for Process Improvement. And I really do have an interest to get my PMP certification. Now, I know that's kind of long, and I would probably have to do a lot of wordsmithing to get that down to 40, to 40 words. But that's definitely something that I could do. Does anyone else want to share their uh, summary? If not, I'll keep going forward here. There's one more question I saw in the Q&A, Christopher. It's mid-career okay. or senior professionals are often involved in volunteering for IEEE or any other professional bodies. Will these activities be at the top of the profile or may create no value no matter what place we mention in our profile? So how are we talking about you know real estate and where where you would put what? You know what? I would actually uh, put it in multiple places. I would probably uh, briefly mention it in my profile just so that people can uh, uh, really understand who I am, that I, I enjoy volunteering for any type of STEM activities, working with young professionals. I would also post it as a short little article. Recently, I was at the Kansas City, uh, Missouri University, and I gave a presentation. I actually had an opportunity to take some photos with some of the students there. I also shared some words of wisdom uh, with them. And that took me probably more, no more than five, 10 minutes. But again, definitely mention your volunteer, what you're passionate about. I, I, people who know me know that I'm passionate about IEEE, period. I am passionate about IEEE, period. It's given me so much. 
And I didn't realize until later on in life what it gave me. So I'm definitely going to share that passion. Any other question? Okay, so declare war on buzzwords. So what are we saying here when we're talking about buzzwords? So we got to also be careful when we're talking about buzzwords. We want to make sure that we're using good buzzwords, excuse me, <laughs> uh, buzzwords and not the overuse of them. So we not want to include uh, terms like specialized, leadership, focus, strategic, experience, passionate, expert, creative, innovative, and certified. And so when we're choosing those uh, different types of words, those buzzwords, what would be a good one uh, from a student standpoint? I'm going to give you one. Recent uh, uh, graduate with a, uh, uh, with a passion in a renewable space, specializing specifically around battery energy storage systems. So I was able to use two or three of those buzzwords as part of the summary. Now, all of you are Ada Kappa New members, or I would hope the majority of you are Ada Kappa New members. And if you're not, that's all right. But what type of uh, roles did you have within your local chapter? Were you actually the leadership chair? Were you the co-chair or a vice chair? Were you the secretary? Or did you lead uh, all the uh, treasury uh, operations, the financial uh, operations of your uh, chapter? Were you strategic in bringing in new members? Were you uh, experienced in doing fundraisers that help your organization to attend an event? Were you very creative in uh, uh, creating a very uh, unique marketing campaign that got students on your campus as well as other campuses to participate? Now, were you able to receive any type of uh, certification? So if you really think about it, it's not that difficult. It's just a matter of really focusing your message that you want people to perceive you as and share that. Now, Sylvia, do we have any questions around this area? Well, there is one question uh, from Will in the Q&A. How do you go about mentioning that you are conducting research independently because the topic is very interesting and you to you, but you don't currently work in that field? Well, what's the person? I'll, I'll, the next question I'm going to ask is, what's the purpose of that research? Is it going to? Um, are, are you looking at communities that have renewable sources of energy in their home, in in your neighborhood? What percentage of uh, students? manage recycling? Are they big recyclers? What, what is the purpose of that research is what I'm getting to here. Is it compelling enough to share? If it's not compelling enough to share that no one will have interest in it, then I would say it's probably not the best thing to share. So example for me would be, um, I always like to uh, understand uh, people who have certain cars. What is their favorite cars? Well, that may or may not have any relevancy to my LinkedIn profile, but it's just a nice thing to know. But it may have some. So how can I turn into a positive things? 
could be the majority of people that I met like the new 2023 uh, electric stingray. Yeah, that's a compelling one. Some people have some interest in that. So again, it just depends upon what you're researching or what you want to share in reference to uh, that interests you. Does that make sense? Okay. Any other questions, Sylvia? I think we're good for now. If you have a question, you can request to share your audio and video and join Christopher on screen here. Now we're getting towards the uh, end of uh, this particular slide deck, but I also want to share a couple of things that I did not, uh, was not able to add, but make sure that uh, we do have your content information. I want to send a couple of articles that I found on LinkedIn and um, that I think that you'll find very uh, interesting. Let me ask this question since no one's asking questions, uh, Sylvia. How many connections does the average person on this particular uh, session have on a LinkedIn profile? We'll take a, a quick uh, second to give us uh, to get some survey results here. Do we have any people who? Um, I'm seeing 163, 96, 399, 100, 325. Hmm. Not bad. Not bad. So the, the, the other uh, question I would ask is that why so low? Because it's very interesting uh, to me, one of the conversations from a research standpoint that I do, I ask people about how many connections do you have? And if it's a low number, I, I try to understand why. And some of the answers that I received from that is that I only want to connect to people that I really, 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 really know. Or I don't spend that much time in finding connections. Now, if you remember at the beginning of this presentation, I talked about how I make connections. And I connect with people from the state of Texas I connect with people from my industry, which is oil and gas and renewables. I connect with people from my alma mater. And I definitely connect from people from my hometown, my adopted hometown. I don't say my hometown, my adopted hometown of Houston. So why wouldn't I make those connections? Because you never know which connections in that immediate sphere, <laughs> excuse me, in that immediate sphere may have an opportunity that fits me or that will attend in this, uh, the same meeting or conference. It's another way for me to make a connection. And so, which brings us to our uh, one of our last uh, points here grow your network. One of the easiest and yet most relevant ways to grow your network on LinkedIn is to sync your profile with your email address book. Now, I tend not to do that because it's probably personal information that I do not want to be shared or certain connections I don't want to be shared. But there's nothing wrong with you connecting. This also allows LinkedIn to suggest certain connections. And so I get those requests all the time. They'll see someone that is in the renewable space or who posts about STEM or IEEE that I may or may not know. And the first thing that I do is I go and take a look at their profile, making sure that they have a picture, of course, and to learn a bit more about that person. And I'll send a, a, a connection request. So LinkedIn will also help you link, link in or connect with other people. So let me ask you this question. 
El Ash, uh, let me ask the uh, audience uh, this question. What are other ways that you can uh, you can grow your network at school? So let me know when we have some uh, answers there. Will do. So I see uh, Nancy suggested professors. Oh, oh, you know what? What else can professors do? Professors can also write recommendations. Now, if you are an outstanding student in the class, of course, what is wrong with asking a professor for a recommendation? Especially if you received an uh, outstanding uh, senior project. But absolutely, professors are one of your connections. I'm seeing some more answers there. I see participating in contests, volunteering, student Ooh. mixers, career yes. fairs. Yes, 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 yes. And the magic of a LinkedIn that you can actually do it more instantaneously than you ever could do before. Sometimes you have to speed read. But sometimes when I connected with somebody uh, at um, actually uh, this uh, last week when I was at uh, Kansas City State uh, University, Missouri, I asked the uh, students, uh, can I link in with you real quick? And we all pull out our phones. And I was able to connect with 10 or 15 people in the room very easily and very quickly. And so I look at the profile, I'm scanning through it and say, oh, you've been doing some research in the area of uh, renewable energy. I work for a company that uh, is in that space as well. You should uh, definitely take a look at uh, following, uh, following us. And maybe there's a potential for an internship or a co-op opportunity. And if you find something, let me know. I'll be happy to uh, guide you through that process. So a couple more in here. Uh, Bert said, professional societies like IEEE, we want you in IEEE, but other organizations that align to your interests are a good way of growing your network. And Nancy Absolutely. suggested, if you're an HKN chapter, with your gen you know, general meeting, do a LinkedIn connection exercise to boost those Absolutely. connections. No, I'm sorry to cut you off, but <laughs> yes, 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 and yes. So let's talk about the other, uh, other potential societies that are out there, professional organizations that you could uh, join. Now, we know that IEEE is the world's largest professional organization. Let's say that one more time, because sometimes people don't really understand that. The world's largest professional organization that's known globally with over 430,000 members worldwide. Now, they write the rules which are the standards in electrical, biomedical, renewable, they write those rules and those standards. So why wouldn't I be a part of a professional network? Why wouldn't I go to a section meeting and meet the, prof uh, the professionals at those meetings? They can do the same thing that I can do in reference to a job opportunity or an internship or a co-op ship. You have to make the effort to want to be a part of the network. Not too many times they're going to just look out and look you up. And so what are some of those ways? We, someone mentioned volunteering. I have a uh, young mentee who's our Houston section webmaster and he's uh, he's a junior this year and he's had several co-ops several internships and made tremendous contacts with the utility uh with the local utilities in our area so the state of texas has a couple of big utilities we have encore energy and we have a uh, center point uh, energy 
And so we have members that go to those meetings. He makes a point to go to those meetings. He makes a point to share those stories. He makes a point to get himself involved. And this is why he has internship opportunities all the time. And some, and every, every other week or so, we get the opportunity to talk. We talk about some of those connections that he made. Is it in your area uh, that you want to go into? Yes. So what are you doing to further engage in that uh, uh, connection? Are you asking to spend some time with them to, uh, to understand what they do? So absolutely. Any other comments, uh, Sylvia? So Eileen has said alumni in the companies could be a great chance of networking. True, true. So how do we network? How do we network? Do you think that we can network by not saying hello? Do you think we can network by not introducing ourselves? Do you think that uh, uh, we can network without sharing our interests and our passion? Can we not network by sharing that we have a particular interest in a particular field or area? We have to learn how to network better. So Maybe Christopher, oops, sorry, finish your thought. Go ahead, go ahead. On the topic of this networking and, you know, putting yourself out there and getting to know folks, can you speak to oversharing? Is it possible to overshare? <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, when I was at uh, GE, they used to uh, tell us, let's, let's, before you do anything, make sure it passes the newspaper test. Make sure it passes the newspaper test. Meaning if you're going to share something, make sure that it is relevant and will not cause any type of embarrassment or shame or concern about what you're sharing. Now, I will be um, mindful of a not discussing politics. I would be uh, mindful um, not to discuss opinions about specific a specific person by name. I would be uh, mindful not to talk about money. So those are just some general things that I would stay away from. So why would I stay away from politics? Well, the person I'm talking to may be a Republican, may be a Democrat. Don't know, don't care. My objective is to get to know that person and the potential opportunities there with that company. Now, why would I want to talk about money? Well, Let's, let's say that you uh, met me at a, uh, at a conference and you want to uh, you want to work for uh, my company and said and I said that we're, we hire interns at five thousand ten thousand dollars. Well you may think that's too low or first year uh, uh, college students coming out of college we only pay fifty thousand dollars. And you'll come and maybe, well, that's too low. That's not the market value. So you want to refrain from having conversations like that around those things. Another reason I, I, I've, I've talked to one of my mentees about is that who cares about the money at this point in time because you're just starting off? Build your portfolio. Build your experience. 
Build your network. Share what you're learning. Get the certifications. Get the industry updates. You're building your brand. I also uh, suggest a, re, uh, a young man that I was uh, mentoring. He didn't have a lot of industry experience. And, he's, and he's, he tried to, he shared his profile that he works for Apple. I said, great, so what are you, uh, what part, he's an electrical engineer. I said, so what part of Apple, uh, what type of uh, product are you working on and what type of uh, projects are you working on? He said, well, I work at uh, Apple Retail. I said, okay. I said, that it's not clearing your profile though. I'm confused. So you get a perception that you work at Apple, what you do, but you're working on the retail side, but you're an engineer trying to break into the industry. I said, what is wrong with you taking a non-paid internship? He didn't think that he should do that. I said, okay, not a problem. Well, three months later, he came back to me and said, hey, uh, you think I can find somewhere and I can do some uh, free internships? I said, yeah, just come to the Houston section meeting. I'm going to introduce you to uh, Bob, and he's going to give you some guidance. And he's going to uh, uh, most likely allow you to work with him. He did. Bob saw that he did a very good job and actually paid him. But the mindset that you have to get paid is sometimes a, a delicate one. Sometimes you're not, you may not be able to necessary to afford that. He was fortunate because he was still at home. He was fortunate because the school was local. He was fortunate because the job was local. So expense wise, he had nothing but gas and lunch. But what Bob did after he saw his dedication, saw his work ethic, was willing to pay him. Any other questions? Uh, hey, Christopher, it's Nancy Osted. How are you? This has been an oh, awesome session. I'm very in an hour, I'm Nancy. Yeah, we're getting we're getting really close to the end of the the end of the uh, the session. So we've got about a okay. minute left. So thanks everyone for your great questions and for engaging today. I think you know Christopher has a lot to offer, and I really appreciate all the things that you've shared with us. Um, we'll be sure to post some follow up on social media. Maybe some of your great tips for this because I think that's important. But I love um, you know making sure people use their IEEE their Etika new networks. To, to connect with others, who will connect you with others. As a matter of fact, I am getting some connection requests for some of you on my LinkedIn. So happy to connect with you myself, and I'm sure Christopher will be as well. But uh, thanks again, Christopher. Uh, thanks for the great session. Thanks for everyone who joined us uh, for this, for, for today, um, for this, for this